take a look around from the big to the small the visible to the invisible life is everywhere the smallest unit of life is called the cell and your body is made up of 30 to 40 trillion of them but if you took the total number of bacteria on your body right now that number would outnumber your body cells 10 to 1 making us theoretically 90 percent bacteria now that's a lot of bacteria but can you imagine the total number of bacteria on earth it's a ridiculously high number and we all know bacteria can survive almost anywhere on the planet. Now take that total number of bacteria on the planet and add to it every other living thing from birds to mammals, fish, add it all on. What number do you get now? What's the total number of living organisms on earth? What if I told you that it didn't matter because there's an entity on earth that outnumbers every living thing combined that you guys probably don't even know about, bacteriophages. Bacteriophages, or phages for short, are viruses that infect bacteria cells. They are by far the most abundant and diverse biological entities on the planet, totaling 10 to the 31st in population. To put that in perspective, there are 1 billion times more bacteriophages on Earth than stars in the observable universe. There are 10 billion times more phages than every grain of sand added up on Earth. Lastly, if you added the net worth of Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, and Warren Buffett together, and multiplied that number by a trillion, you'd still have a hundred million times less money than the total number of bacteriophages on the planet. So should we be worried with all these viruses floating around? Well, no. These viruses are very host specific, meaning they only infect certain species of bacteria cells by recognizing very specific receptors on the surface of bacteria. In other words, they're no harm to human cells at all. Bacteriophages were first co-discovered in the early 1900s by a British scientist named Frederick Tort and a French-Canadian scientist named Felix Durrell. These scientists noticed that clear circles called plaques were forming on their petri dishes that were growing bacteria, suggesting that the bacteria was being killed. Durrell named them bacteriophages, literally meaning bacteria eaters. These phages solely rely on random encounters with bacteria that they infect. Once they come in contact with their specific host, they attach to the surface of the cell with tail proteins and begin to degrade the cell wall. They then inject their DNA or genetic material which is stored in the head or the capsid through their tail and into the bacteria cell. Depending on the virus, the cell does one of two things at this point. If the phage is a lytic virus, the cell's machinery, including the ribosomes, will begin to make viral proteins that were coded in the newly integrated viral DNA within minutes. The cell continues to replicate the phage progeny until eventually the cell bursts open and hundreds of newly created bacteriophages are released into the surroundings, looking to infect more bacteria. If the phage is lysogenic on the other hand, it does not burst the cell open immediately. Instead, the genetic information is replicated along with the rest of the cell's genome and remains dormant. Once the conditions are right, that's when the viral replication initiates and lysis of the cell occurs. So what's the big deal? Why do we care about bacteriophages if they don't really affect us? Well, first and foremost, the potential antibiotic capabilities of these phages are astounding. In a world where antibiotic resistance is on the rise and superbugs are always a threat on the horizon, phages could offer a quick and inexpensive way to solve these bacteria problems. Treating bacterial diseases like tuberculosis and leprosy could potentially be achieved by introducing phages that infect that specific bacterial strain. Phages also have some bioremediation potential and could be used to control environmental problems in the future. Hospitals have been attempting to develop ways to use phages to reduce biofilm in hospital settings, which is becoming an increasing problem. Lastly, the US Food and Drug Administration and the USDA have approved several phage products including treating meat and poultry products with phages. A ton of research and studies continue to take place on bacteriophages, many of which involve their genomics. Because of their abundance, there is a humongous reservoir of untapped and unsequenced gene information that could lead to the next big discovery in science. Who knows what's to come? Thanks for watching.